Are you looking for a job but can't even land an interview? Well, I feel like there might be one important piece missing, which is LinkedIn profile. When was the last time you've updated it? Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, good thing you're here, because in this video I'll go step by step, section by section, and we'll tell you what to do with your LinkedIn profile. So if you want to get hired in Canada, watch this video till the very end and let's get started. So what is LinkedIn? Is it another social media platform? Well, yes and no. LinkedIn is a social media platform that is focused on job search and employment. You can either build your online resume, you can connect with your colleagues, you can look for jobs, you can take courses. LinkedIn offers a whole different job-related stuff. I should say that LinkedIn is pretty big in North America and in Europe in general. So if you're planning to move to Canada, let's say, you should consider filling in your LinkedIn profile. First, let's look at the LinkedIn page. It consists of your photo, your background photo, about section, then you will have your experience, education, skills, achievements, awards. So basically the whole profile is about you, your work, your experience. It's your time to shine basically. But let's go through each category step by step. First one is the header section. One important thing, you need to use your real name. No nicknames like on Instagram, like on Facebook and YouTube. You need to put your real name out there because if you're gonna get hired, they will know your real name, so why hide it in the first place? As for the title, you can either put your current title, your previous title, or maybe something you're good at. Some career coaches that I worked with told me, highlight your skills basically. So I'm a product designer, but I can also do UX design, I can do illustration, I can do web development. So they said I can put Yulia, product designer, and then add illustration, web development, UX design, social media, whatever I'd like to. But people also would put their previous places of work. If let's say you worked at Google, you can say X Google. You worked for Amazon, you can say X Amazon. This way, if a person is searching for a designer from Google, your profile will pop up. Background pictures should be neutral. Some people prefer to put the projects in there. For example, Gary V would put all his companies out there. Some people would choose something like their city, their favorite place. But please don't put those neon signs being like, hire me, I'm so desperate. Just pick something nice and good looking. If you have a visual representation of the work you do, you can also put that there. For example, I know some designers would put like some highlights of their work. So if you have something to show, just put it in the background image. As for your photo, it should be a professional or at least a good looking picture of you. No selfies on the beach, no cutouts from the photos. It's supposed to be a good picture with good lighting, preferably smiling. I know not everyone likes to smile, but you need a job, right? So please don't forget to smile. If you don't have a nice photo of yours, you can always ask your friend. You can set a tripod, literally take a picture on the white background and then cut it or maybe leave it on the white background, who cares? Some colleges and universities in Canada offer such services to students. They're like, oh, hey, we have a job fair, but we also have a photographer who can take your headshot for your LinkedIn profile. And again, if you wanna start looking for jobs before moving to another country, Take a picture yourself, fill in your LinkedIn profile and start browsing. Move into the next section, which is about section. First of all, you do not need to write an essay about your life. I was born in Russia and then I moved to Canada. I studied languages. Who cares if you're applying for, I don't know, an accountant position, who cares about your medical background or whatever, unless it's relevant to the position you're searching for. The about section is a perfect place for you to brag. You can showcase your skills, maybe your awards, maybe even write a few words about your work goals. You can also mention where you're located, what do you do, what's your perfect job place. If you're looking for a technical job, you might list some of the software applications that you're using. For me, as a designer, I always put like a whole bunch of like Figma, Sketch, Adobe, Principle, blah, blah, blah. So like all the software I'm using. So when a recruiter looks for a person who is proficient, let's say in Adobe Creative Cloud, they'll find me because I'm proficient in Adobe CC. A good example here would be, I'm Yulia, content creator. So I just said what I do. I specialize in filming videos about education abroad, education in Canada, travel in the world. So I kind of listed my industries. My passion is helping others. That's why I created my YouTube channel in the first place. So I kind of explain what's happening. And then I can add some skills like editing videos, 
writing scripts, or I can add software that I use, Adobe Premiere Pro, Photoshop, stuff like that. The next section on your LinkedIn profile would be a featured section, which is basically a place for all your fun stuff. Let's say if you're a designer like myself, you can put your work in there because on LinkedIn, there is no place for your portfolio. You can't just put your website and be like, go there. However, in the featured section, you can always display some cool articles, maybe publications, maybe works you've done, maybe something else that you're proud of. Since this section is up top of the page, the potential recruiter will see it right away. The next section is a big one and it is your experience. And if you don't have work experience, don't worry, I'll talk about that a bit later. So in the experience section, you need to list all your previous jobs. When, where, what were your duties? And the most important part here is the words you choose to talk about your previous job. The thing is, recruiters are interested in your accomplishments, not in your day-to-day -day tasks. The results you've achieved should be measurable. A bad example would be, I talk to clients. Fun, sounds fun. A good example would be, I talked to clients and the satisfaction rate was 98% based on, let's say, surveys that we held at the company. You said that you talked to people, the satisfaction rate was high and how you knew that the rate was high. A bad example would be, I sold shoes. A good example would be, I sold shoes and I've increased the shoe sales by 15% during 2022. And don't forget to use power words. Forget about those did, made, talked, it's boring. It's literally second grade English class. Use stronger words like influence, created, developed, managed. Just Google LinkedIn power words to use. You'll have a full list of them. And please avoid using those basic phrases like, I'm super communicative. I work good under pressure. That was a thing like 20 years ago. Now everyone can communicate and can work under pressure because literally COVID was last year. Everyone knows how to work under pressure. The next section is education. Similarly to work experience, you need to fill that out too. Where you've studied, when you've studied, what you've studied, what's your major. Some people prefer to put some courses, some curriculum, but for example, I studied for like five years. If I start listing all my courses, that will take the entire page. So just put your major and when and where you studied. If you have some achievements, maybe some publications that are relevant to your job search, I would also put it in the description of your education, for example. The next section can also be helpful for the job search and its skills and endorsements. Here you need to put the actual skills that you have, preferably the hard skills. So if you're good at accounting, put accounting. If you're good at entrepreneurship, put entrepreneurship. If you're good at JavaScript, put JavaScript. Know this working under pressure communication stuff. You got it, right? Be specific in your skills. So when the recruiter searches for a JavaScript person, they find you, not your neighbor Antonio. LinkedIn also offers a bunch of tests and courses. You can take those tests to have those badges on your profile saying, hey, I've accomplished the JavaScript quiz. I'm a pro. The next section is very important and it is recommendations. So basically it's like reference letter, but online on your LinkedIn profile. If you worked with people, ask them to write you a recommendation. But my tip would be ask higher people like managers, CEO, CTO to write you a recommendation because your colleagues, yeah, fun. You worked with like other, I don't know, accountants with other nurses, whatever. But if you have your supervisor, your manager writing you a recommendation saying, hey, they were easily to manage, they were perfect to work with, that would be a bonus for you. Recommendations are normally like super tiny, short, one paragraph max, and you can request recommendations. If your colleague John is okay with writing a tiny paragraph about you, you can click on request recommendation button and John will get this prompt saying, hey John, can you please write a paragraph about me? Very good. The next section is for my people without the work experience and it's volunteering. I said that many times, volunteering is very important, especially in North America. If you don't have work experience, you can always put your volunteering experience, but please make sure that it's relevant. Cause for example, when I moved to Canada, I volunteered at events and my events volunteering hours, they like 
nothing to my current job search. By the way, I have a full video talking about volunteering in Canada. You can watch it after this one. And the next section is accomplishments and awards. Here you can put some qualifications, some certifications, maybe some test scores, languages that you speak, anything that's relevant to your position, to your job, put it here. If you took that Google product management course online, put it there. If you have your IELTS score, put it there. But please don't put languages that you're not fluent in. If you can say good morning in Turkish and order a coffee, I wouldn't put it there. So that's exactly why I don't put Portuguese on my profile. Because if somebody wants to hire me for a Portuguese position, I'll be like, Olá, bom dia, obrigada. Moving to the next section, which is interests. Here you can follow some companies, some groups that you're interested in. A, it will show that you're interested in the company, the topic, the group whatsoever. B, you'll be getting job alerts from that company. You can also join some professional groups on LinkedIn and maybe even find friends. And if you're looking to get more from LinkedIn, they offer LinkedIn Premium. You can see how you compare to different applicants, access the hiring trends and much more. Plans start at 50 bucks per month, which is kind of expensive. And if you're just looking for a job, I'm not sure if it's worth it. If any of you have used LinkedIn Premium, let us know. And if you're not a company or an HR, just a regular person looking for a job, I'd love to hear your experience because LinkedIn has been offering me the premium for quite some time now. And I'm just like, 50 bucks a month? Like, why? And that's it for today. I hope you now get an idea of what to put in your LinkedIn profile. I wish you best of luck if you're looking for a job. And if you still have questions about LinkedIn profile, fill in information, leave your questions in the comments section down below and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.